Corvo, a frame known for doing billions of damage with melee weapons, isn't even a melee warframe. No, 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 no. Just think about it. What's good, folks? It's Nightmare Frame here with a new Warframe video coming at you with a different perspective on Kulervo. I surely did catch some people off guard with my initial statement, but let me elaborate. You know Kulervo for red critting with melee, and if you like that type of playstyle, then do go check out my 2 billion damage Kulervo nuke video. It is very satisfying. But this video right here is for the cultured individuals. I know who you are, I see you. As most of you know, Wrathful Advance is what makes him do the red crits and give him that heavy attacking strength. However, it's the only ability that is definitively a melee skill. But then you don't have to use it as a melee skill, but a movement tool, and it's also a helmet ability. So any other Warframe can have this ability. Yet people think that is his best ability, but it's not. I mean, it's the problem with a lot of Warframe players. They just like see number go red, make brain happy, when damage big, yes, me like big red number. And the other thing that's melee s is his passive, which gives him that heavy attack efficiency and wind up speed. Yet Varuna has half of that passive already. So now we're left with his other three abilities, and a couple of them aid with combo buildup, but they do way more beneficial things than that. His second ability gives him Overguard and deals damage to then deal damage over time. His fourth ability is AoE damage over time. But the ability that makes Kulervo insane is his third, Collective Curse. This is one of the best abilities in the game. It's a wave that links enemies together and has them share damage. So depending on your strength, you can have them share 50% all the way to 100% of all the damage dealt, allowing his first ability with a single target melee heavy attack to turn it into an AoE wide nuke. That's already been power crept by melee influence. Just one arcane. I hope the world can see now what's really going on out here, because it's getting ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. But that's not all. This ability transfers damage to all targets and helps single target weapons. And what are some of the hardest hitting single target weapons out there? Snipers. Yes, snipers only ever shine in dead content, Eidolon hunts, disruption, funny meme runs, and void cascade. Or if your sortie forces you to bring a sniper, but then you, you, you just bring an ability warframe like Mesa holding a sniper. Yeah, yeah. So Collective Curse is what makes Kulervo insanely good and helps a lot of single target weapons, which fall off really hard in other missions, to actually shine because it allows you to AoE nuke with single target weapons. It's funny how AoE just keeps on remaining meta, even though DE changes something but still remains dominant. War. Frame. Warframe never changes. Now I'm here to share with you a Kalevo Sniper nuke build. Yes, you heard those string of words put together. So how does it work? Simple really. Press 3, get all the enemies ching 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 ching, linked together, and then kwapam! In their faces, all dead, to the ground, you did a million damage with one sniper shot. No need to worry about building melee combo. However, snipers are the only guns in the game that have a combo count system, but function differently from melee. And unfortunately, Kulervo does not aid sniper combo buildup the way you think he does. I'll get to that. So shooting and landing hits with your sniper builds up combo counter. And the higher your combo, the more damage you end up dealing. And this damage is a final damage multiplier. What I'm saying is it's a mini eclipse just for snipers. So you can see the combo buildup when you aim down sights with your sniper and shoot a target. Multi-shot also helps you build up combo faster as it counts as multiple hits with a single shot. But then here is where Collective Curse comes in and makes snipers even better. Hold on. I'm cooking, I'm cooking. Remember when I said it links all enemies together and they can share damage? Hey, <laughs> now imagine hitting 20 enemies plus multi-shot with a single bullet. Collective Curse helps you build up sniper combo insanely fast. That's what I'm talking about. This is all I need. And here's another cool thing. Each sniper offers you a different buff when you aim down sights. For example, the Rubico gives you more crit damage multiplier, which is a nice all-rounder buff, while the Vectus Prime gives you a 
headshot damage multiplier for even more damage to that noggin. So, it depends on what type of sniper you're using. For this particular build, I'm not bothering with status application or damage over time setups. Just pure raw damage to nuke everything in one shot. So the best snipers I recommend for this are the Rubico Prime and the Vectus Prime. But if you don't have either, then the Perigill is the next option because it does have that passive where it gives you ammo efficiency on headshots. All right, now that you know what to expect for the build, let's go to the build section where I go over the Archon Shards gameplay loop, what to prioritize, and of course, all the mods and synergy. Let's get to it. Okay, here we are in the Simulacrum, taking a look at this juicy Colervo build. Now for the helmet, of course, it's going to be Roar. Roar is our universal damage multiplier, and it gives us that free faction damage so we don't have to mod it on our weapons. Because the sniper is just going to be built for pure raw damage damage so we're going to be focusing on crits raw base damage and elemental damage multipliers with a little bit of utility when it comes to either stability minus zoom and even reload speed so it depends on what you really want and this is why roar is just going to be the best thing to have for this build now in terms of archon shards you can literally run whatever you feel is necessary you can go with more strength so you can buff your roar so you can do even more damage or what i would recommend is running purple shards to give you that additional electric damage on your primary so if you go a full purple shard combo here to give you that bonus electric damage this will boost your corrosive damage because you'll be saving a mod slot as you'll be giving your primaries free electric damage and when you have a free mod slot you can put whatever you want more crits more damage and whatever you feel is necessary to be added and as you saw i was doing all that damage without a single archon shard without further ado let's take a look at the colorable build these are my polarities, and one of them will be a negative polarity. Don't worry about it. These are for other builds. As I said earlier in the video, if you want to see a different playstyle on Clairvo, just click on that linked video at the top. Now for the Arcanes, I'll be running Molt Augmented for the strength increase after 250 kills. And then Arcane Energize for the energy maintenance. This is going to be an ability spam build because I will be spamming my third ability quite a lot and my second ability to give me Overguard. Now, starting off with the Aura, it's going to be Corrosive Projection for that minus 18% armor. This is a huge damage increase because, well, you reduce the armor a little bit, you deal even more damage. And because they did nerf enemies recently, this makes you deal even more damage. For the Exilus, I'll be running Power Drift for the 15% bonus strength. This is just to round off some of my strength, and it gives you a nice little bonus there, which really doesn't matter because we have Overguard. Now, for my other strength increases, I'll be going with Transient Fortitude for that 55% strength. We do lose some duration, but we'll counteract that. No worries. And my final strength increase is going to be Precision Intensified. This gives me 90% strength for my fourth ability. And that's the main reason why I put Roar as my fourth ability. So then I can take full advantage of Precision Intensified to give me a bigger bonus. And I'm going to be easily building up my strength on Collective Curse with Molt Augmented and even my Focus School Matterai for that initial startup. Now for the range increases so my Collective Curse can hit multiple enemies, I'll be running Augur Reach and Stretch. You could even run Archon Stretch if you wanted to, but then you'll have to mod your companion differently. So that's up to you. And for that energy maintenance, I'll be putting in Equilibrium right here. That energy to health conversion. And lastly, Streamline for that efficiency. Again, this is a spam heavy build, so we're going to need all the energy we need as we're not using Nourish for our helmet. Then finally, to give us a large energy pool, I'll be running Prime Flow. We go from 200 to 641. Then finally, to counteract that negative duration, I'll be putting on Primed Continuity. This gives me that 55% duration increase, so then I get 38 seconds on my Roar. A decent uptime right there. And this is the Snipe Lervo built. Simple, clean, and efficient. Moving on to the two snipers I recommend. And all these builds will be Rivenless, so anyone can run them. Starting off with my Bectic Prime. For the Arcane, I'll be running Primary Deadhead. This gives me base damage when I get a headshot kill, which stacks up to three times. And that 30% headshot damage multiplier, which is additive to Vectus's headshot damage multiplier. And of course, that minus recoil, because snipers do have a recoil, and I'll be adding onto that wood stabilizer so if we have a look when we shoot our sniper there is not a single recoil beautiful 
The secondary base damage mod is going to be from Semi-Rifle Cannonade. This is the only time where it's useful because I'm not spamming my shots and I want as much raw damage as possible. And it gives me 1.5 meters of punch through, which is not bad. And for my crit chance increases, I do have critical delay and galvanized scope. Fire rate is fixed thanks to this mod, so critical delay does not do anything for our fire rate. So there are no negatives there. Vectus itself does not have great crit chance, so it goes to 90% with just a critical delay, and Galvanized Scope takes me over that 100%. And to multiply the damage when I crit, I'll be running Vital Sense and Bladed Rounds. We're going to be aiming down sights quite a bit, so this is a nice boost to our damage. And for the elemental damage increase, I'll be running Corrosive. Now, the Rubico build is going to be slightly different with a few changes here and there. Again, this is the Ribbonless build. Base damage is still the same with Primary Deadhead. But in the Exilus, I'll be running Ambush Optics. This reduces the zoom, which makes this so much better to use as an all-rounder sniper. Again, for our base damage, I'll be running the Cannonade mod. And since Rubico easily goes over 100% crit chance, I do not need to add Galvanize Scope, but instead I'll be running Primed Fast Hands for the faster reload speed. It doesn't reload as fast as Vectus, so this is definitely mandatory for this build. And again, Rubico, even though it has that slight recoil, you won't notice it that much. Now for the companion build, you can literally run whatever you want at this point. Just make sure to have Tenacious Bond for the crit damage increase. So that's just having Tenacious Bond right there and a Sentinel weapon that has over 50% crit chance and you can slap on Vigilante mods for even for a higher critical tier. However, this is just a basic Nautilus build. The main thing you want here is the grouping and Tenacious Bond. And I put the Volcox over here as my weapon. It has critical delay and my crit chance is over 50% and Vigilante mods so I get a 20% chance to hit a new critical tier. Simple and clean. So yeah, folks, this is the Snipe Lervo setup. It's slightly different from what you usually do with Colervo when using your melee. However, you're still able to do crazy damage one-shotting everything in sight. So that has been it for me. I do hope you've enjoyed and learned something from this video. If you did, please feel free to leave a like, share, and subscribe for more Warframe content, streams, and so much more. Do it for the description. And if you want to see the previous videos, you can just click on the video that will be popping up on screen or, again, the description. And as always, a peace. A bye-bye now.